I kind of want to start with this, uh, you know, you, you guys are very big in frozen food. You have huge business in peas, you have business in spinach, you obviously have famously fish fingers under the bird's eye brand. What's, what's, what does a company like yours get into pizza for? Well, it's, first, it's, it's a very exciting time for us because we're doing very well organically. And then obviously now we're starting M&A after two years. We were preparing ourselves. And pizza is a great category for us. It's very, very, very complimentary. It's big in Europe. Uh, it's very complimentary to us in the UK, in Ireland. So there is all the, re and the, and the brands are great. And uh, we, we love brands. So the combination is, is excellent. Now, one thing we always hear about in the food industry is this kind of pivot towards health and wellness, fresh ingredients. How does that fit into, you know, obviously building, as you guys are, this frozen food empire, if you like? Uh, the interesting thing is, even when I started, I came to the, quickly to the conclusion that this is really a category, including pizza, by the way, frozen pizza, frozen food is really a category where the reality is much better than perception. So you think in terms of waste, you think in terms of natural ingredients, in terms of how to preserve the food, compared to anything else, it's, it's much better. The thing we have to do now is really to do a better job as a category leader to explain that you know, to the consumers and to the retailers that it's the right thing to do and that it's a great category. It's a long-term journey, but it's really a journey that we want to, to pursue right now. Now, one thing that's sort of gone on for a while in food, if you like, in big food particularly, is this, this disruption that's been caused particularly by, you know, if you look at 3G, you look at some of the deals they've done with Warren Buffett, JAB on the slightly smaller end in terms of coming in and buying some of these big companies. We've seen this really change, I suppose, the way big food thinks about itself and, and particularly the likes of yeah. Kellogg's, Campbell's, General Mills, these companies all now seem to be targets. Is that something that creates opportunity for a company like Nomad, or is that just sort of part and parcel now of existing in the food industry? Well, it definitely does. At, at the same time, what we really want to do is to be focused. I think the mis mistakes were made in the past in other companies to, to become some sort of conglomerate, and we want to be focused. We, we, we're leading the consolidation of frozen food in Europe to start with, and that's exactly where we're going to create value. It is going to be a combination of cost, but definitely a top line. What we've been doing over the last two years, it's really focused behind the top line. Without the top line, obviously, you can't grow. Now, you talked about sort of getting the house in order. Obviously, the share price yeah. was, was seriously depressed at one point. It's come back. I think it's up about 150% uh, in the last year. It's up again a bit today on the back of the news. Um, you talk about M&A opportunities. What would you see in the US? Is there stuff you guys could potentially buy over here? I think, again, frozen food is something we know. So definitely, we should not exclude the, uh, the US. It's a good thing to do. But short term, the consolidation and the synergies you know, are in Europe. So again, the, the, the concept is, it makes a lot of sense. But short term, yeah, the, the consolidation for us and the value creation in, is, is really starting in, in Europe. And how does that play out with Brexit? Obviously, you know, that has had an effect on some, particularly on the consumer habits in the UK, but also on the people's ability to go out and spend. Is that something that concerns you guys? You're very heavily weighted towards you. We're getting ready. So if, if things happen, obviously, nobody knows exactly what Brexit will be, unless someone is telling me. But we're getting ready for whatever scenario we, we, we could have. But overall, we feel confident we're going to get there. And that's why, by the way, we're investing, we're investing in the UK and Ireland. And is it something, I mean, if, look, if the, the price of goods goes up for you guys, is that something you're able to pass on to consumers? How, how, do, how does a company like yours, which obviously has that exposure to, you know, UK consumer spending, how do you deal with that? Uh, so far, so good. But the, the key is obviously how to make sure that we're building great brands. And it doesn't, go, it doesn't come with great, without great brands. And we have great brands, and we keep investing behind the great brands. And if we have the great brands, then you obviously you have what it takes to come up with the right explanation to the retailers and say, you know what? I mean, the cost, cost of goods sold is increasing, so we have to obviously pass it on. So far, we've been successful. And, and again, as long as we're building the, the brands, it's going to be all right. Now, I want to ask a question about the sort of the, the, the culture of this company, because you have two really, really enormous deal makers behind it, Martin yes, Frank and obviously Noam Godsman. These guys have built empire after empire after empire through M&A. What's that like as a, as a CEO working for, for two people like that? Are they sort of on your back all the time saying, let's go out and do more deals? What, what's the culture? They are very supportive. They're very pragmatic. When the time, times were a bit rough, you know, they were really behind us. They were patient. And they, they define themselves, and it's, it resonates pretty well with the organization, as owners versus renters. And that's what people like to hear, because with that, you know, you can build careers, you can attract talents. 
which is at the end of the day, that's what it matters. That's what matters is make sure that within the organization you have great talents and you can't have great talents, you know, without, without a long-term view. And they, that's exactly what they offer. Have you guys got more deals in the pipeline that we should be on our toes for? Uh, obviously, we are preparing ourselves, but, you know, it's, I've been in a minute in my life and, uh, you know, have a mantra, never talk about, you know, any future deals. You, you have to announce what you have to announce when you're ready, period.